before Brazil had a name, before any ship found these shores. This land was already speaking. The voices were many, carried by wind through forests, by paddles cutting river water. These were the first chapters, written not in ink but in bloodlines. And blood remembers. It remembers ice and fire, hunger and hope. It remembers steps across frozen seas, sails cutting the Atlantic, and chains clinking in dark holds. Each arrival left a mark, a rhythm in the music, a flavor in the food, a pattern in the DNA. This is not just the story of a country. It is a journey of over 15,000 years told cell by cell. The first Brazilians walked into history long before Portugal even existed. They came from Siberia during the last ice age carrying paternal lineages like QM3, which geneticists have traced in 12,600-year-old remains from Montana. Their maternal lines, A2, B2, C1, D1, were born in Ice Age refuges of East Asia, then crossed the Bering Land Bridge into the Americas. They had copper to light brown skin, straight black hair and deep brown eyes, traits shaped by genes like OCA2 and MC1R, tuned for equatorial sunlight. They read rivers as if they were veins, mapped forests without ink. And when Portuguese men arrived centuries later, indigenous women became the mothers of Brazil's first mixed-generation children. Their mitochondrial DNA still beats in most Brazilians today, a heartbeat from the continent's dawn. In 1500, sails appeared on the horizon. With them came silent killers, smallpox, measles, and influenza. Invisible yet relentless, they moved ahead of the ships, reaching villages long before a European face was ever seen. Soon after came the taking of land and with it, the slow fading of traditions shaped over thousands of years. The Portuguese also carried a layered past. The oldest strand came from Western hunter-gatherers, survivors of the Ice Age with paternal haplogroups like I2 and maternal lines such as U5 and U4, dark-skinned, blue-eyed, bound to forest and river. Then came the Anatolian farmers. Around 9,000 years ago, people from what is now Turkey and the Fertile Crescent carried wheat, barley, pottery and animals into Europe. They brought G2A, maternal lines like T2, K1 and N1A, lighter skin and the first villages. Last were the Eurasian steppe herders 5,000 years ago. They carried Habla Group R1B, maternal lines like H6 and W, along with horses, wheels, and the early Indo-European tongue, ancestor of Latin and later Portuguese. Their beliefs merged through Rome into Christianity, and their genes spread lighter skin across Europe. By the Age of Discovery, the Portuguese were heirs to all three worlds, 
but their paternal lines were dominated by R1B's most widespread lineage, M269. Olive to fair skin, dark hair and brown or hazel eyes were most common. Few brought wives. Many married indigenous women, passing on bloodlines, the Catholic faith and the Portuguese language. From the windswept steppe to Lisbon and onto the vibrant streets of Brazil, the Portuguese thread in blood, in language and in faith carries the memory of a journey, one shaped by new beginnings, but also by lives and traditions left behind. Yet Brazil's story was not written by European hands alone. Across the Atlantic came another tide, not of explorers, but of millions who were forcibly taken from their homelands. Beginning in the 16th century, Portuguese traders brought men, women and children from West and Central Africa to work in Brazil's expanding sugar plantations, gold mines and later coffee estates. The colony's vast land, tropical climate and booming export economy made Brazil the largest destination for Africans in the Americas. Between the 1500s and 1800s, over four million people were taken from regions such as Angola, the Congo and Benin. They endured long voyages across the ocean under inhumane conditions journeys where many would never reach the shore. They carried E1, B1, AM2, a paternal lineage over 20,000 years old, widespread in West Africa. Their maternal lines, L1, L2, L3, are among the oldest on Earth, some over 100,000 years in age, first born by early Homo sapiens. Their skin was deep brown to black, their hair tightly curled, their eyes warm brown, each an adaptation to the tropical sun. They brought rhythms that became samba, steps that became capoeira, and gods that merged into candomblé. In parts of Brazil today, African ancestry makes up more than half of the genetic makeup, a foundation as enduring as the land itself. By the late 1800s, ships from the Mediterranean, Lebanese and Syrian migrants. Many carried J1, born in the deserts of Arabia, and J2, rooted in the ancient Fertile Crescent. Maternal lines like U3 and K had crossed the Mediterranean for thousands of years. They often had olive skin, dark hair, and hazel or brown eyes. Arriving as merchants and shopkeepers, they reshaped Brazil's cities, weaving Middle Eastern flavors and customs into the urban fabric. Their numbers were small, but their genetic and cultural imprint endures, seen in notable Lebanese Brazilians such as Michel Temer, former president of Brazil, Fernando Haddad, politician and former mayor of Sao Paulo, Tony Canaan, Indy 500 champion, Adib Jatane, pioneering heart surgeon, and artists like Nanda Costa and singer Fagner. Between 1870 and 1920, over a million Italians crossed the Atlantic. Most came from the northern provinces, Veneto, Lombardy, Piedmont, bringing R1 BU152, the paternal signature of Italic tribes and Roman legions, and G2A, a Neolithic farmer lineage from Anatolia. Maternal lines H and K tied them to the wider Mediterranean. They had fair to olive skin, wavy brown hair, hazel or green eyes. In southern Brazil, they planted vineyards, built factories, 
and filled the air with the smell of bread and wine. Genetically, they increased the frequency of lighter eyes and hair in the South, a visible legacy even today. From the 1820s onward, German settlers arrived in waves. They carried R1BU106, the paternal signature of ancient Germanic tribes, and I1, born in Ice Age Scandinavia. Maternal lines like T2 and U came from Northern Europe's glacial refugees. With fair skin, blonde to light brown hair and blue or gray eyes, they built timber towns like Blumenau and Joinville. Oktoberfest celebrations, German dialects and Lutheran churches still echo their presence. In the genetics of the South, their Northern European heritage remains clear. In 1908, the first Japanese migrants stepped onto Brazilian soil. Their paternal lineage, OM175, had spread through East Asia for 35,000 years. Maternal lines like D4 and M7 trace back to ancient fishing communities of coastal China and Japan. With fair to light brown skin, straight black hair and dark brown eyes. They settled mainly in Sao Paulo. They transformed agriculture, introduced martial arts, and added sushi and tempura to Brazilian tables. Today, Brazil is home to the largest Japanese community outside Japan, their DNA part of the nation's Far Eastern chapter. Polish, Swiss, Ukrainian and Dutch migrants added smaller but distinct genetic notes. Some carried R1A, the paternal marker of Indo-European migrations. Others brought I2 from the Balkans or G2A from the first Anatolian farmers. Their appearances varied widely, pale to medium skin, light or dark hair, blue, green or brown eyes. They left traces in farming traditions, surnames and religious customs scattered across Brazil's map. Today, Brazil's DNA tells a story written in numbers. On average, about 60% European, 25% African and 15% indigenous. But the truth is richer, because every region carries its own balance. In the north, along the Amazon, indigenous ancestry is strongest, 30 to 40 percent, woven with Portuguese and African lines. In the northeast, from Bahia to Pernambuco, African roots run deep. Here, they reach 40 to 50 percent. And in Bahia, sometimes more than 60%. In the southeast, Rio, Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, the story shifts. European ancestry rises to 60 or even 70%, joined by African at 20 to 30%, and indigenous at around 10 to 15%. In the south, the legacy of Italian and German settlers is clear. European ancestry often stands at 70 to 80 percent, with smaller African and indigenous traces. And in the center west, the frontier lands, a true blend. About 50 to 60 percent European, 25 to 30 percent African, and 15 to 20 percent indigenous. Every state, every city, every family, 
a different composition of the same grand symphony, a living mosaic of ancestry, written not on maps, but in blood and memory. From the Amazon to Sao Paulo, from Africa to Europe to Asia, Brazil's DNA is a living archive of human movement. It tells of ice crossings and ocean voyages, of dreams carried across seas, of survival and blending. And in every Brazilian today there is a map, not drawn on paper, but written in cells, carrying the memory of ancestors from every corner of the earth, who came together to create something entirely new. If you enjoyed this journey through Brazil's genetic story, make sure to like, subscribe and share. More stories of history and DNA are waiting, and together we'll keep uncovering the past written within us all.